Hello, hi everybody. I am Thekla Petridou, a Cypriot psychologist and author. You are on my YouTube channel to watch this video. It's Friday today, the 11th of September 2020. And today's uh, subject is how can I make the most of what I have emotionally in my life? Uh, every Friday, I upload a video in English on my channel. Uh, this week, I'm abroad on holidays, so you can see in different location than the previous videos. You can search for the videos in English on my channel in the playlist videos in English on my channel. And uh, today we're going to talk generally about how can one person help themselves to gain resilience, psychological resilience, to be able to have uh, the best outcome of their uh, emotions at any given time. Um, life is not fair. Life is not easy. Life is difficult and many times life is unfair. Life can be unfair for many reasons. Uh, I have this opinion, which I, I said many times in my Greek videos, that the most lucky or unlucky thing to happen to you is the family you are born into. If you are born into a loving and caring, emotionally healthy family, you have more uh, opportunities to grow into a balanced, emo into an em a psychologically and emotionally balanced human being. Most of us, <laughs> we are born or being brought up in families that had their difficulties, and these difficulties we take with ourselves and proceed with them in life. So most of us carry with us psychological and emotional trauma from our past and most importantly from our childhood. Childhood is a very important uh, period in a person's uh, growth, uh, uh, emotional and, uh, and um, psychosocial growth. Uh, early childhood uh, is uh, very distinctive for people's lives later because what happens in early childhood we usually are not able to recollect but it's still there in our subconscious mind and it's affecting us. So most of us uh, find difficulty to have happiness and um, um, positive perspective in life usually because of some uh, ancient trauma and ancient drama that we carry in our brain. Things that happen to us when we were two years old, six months old, one year old, uh, three years old, that we are not able to remember, we're not able to talk about it, we're not, we are not able to think logically and rationally about it and affect our moods, our mood. They affect our feelings. Our feelings, uh, positive feelings like happiness, like optimism, like joy, they are very natural. They emerge by themselves. We cannot manage our emotions. We cannot create emotions. We can understand our emotions and try to rationalize them later, but we do not have any, any power on creating an emotion. And having um, uh, instinctive uh, positive emotions, it's beautiful. I mean, it's very nice if you wake up in the morning and you feel uh, that you love everybody and you love yourself and you have a lot of uh, optimism and you you go to, to grab the day. Uh, this is positive. This is a, a good thing to happen to you, to have uh, optimism and positive, emotion, positive emotions coming naturally out of you, come, uh, coming naturally from your inside. The pro pro problem is with negative emotions, like anger, sad, despair, fear, loneliness, which are also instinctive. We do not instigate them. I do not decide to feel sad. I do not decide to feel angry. I do not decide to feel lonely. It just happens. It happens and I have to face it. So this video is, um, is trying, is, is, is my contribution to you on ha finding the most um, um, positive ways to work with our feelings and with, with our facts during any given day. Um, I'm not a psychoanalyst. Uh, I'm a psychologist of social and clinical direction. I have had some um, 
education is psychoanalysis, but I'm not a psychoanalyst. Psychoanalysts and psychoanalysis talks about um, defense mechanisms. And uh, defense mechanisms are the ways our brain uses to make the most of our facts. I mean, if I have uh, an insight, um, an insight uh, fight, if I have an insight conflict, my brain, Freud calls it uh, ego, uh, my brain tries to make peace with me, so it finds a way for me to cope with the conflict inside. Some defense mechanisms are very, very healthy. Um, some others are not so healthy. Some other defense mechanisms do not allow us to enjoy life and do not allow us to make the most of our life. Um, I will focus on this video in healthy and positive de defense mechanism, uh, mechanisms that we can use. The first one is humor. We can use humor in order to laugh out our pains and our difficulties. If we find ourselves in a situation that we feel trapped, or we feel sad, or we feel that we lose our power, or we feel that uh, we are helpless, one positive response, one positive defense mechanism would be to start laughing about it. I have this personal story uh, which has striking into my uh, mind because it, it was a very, very uh, interesting uh, um, thing that happened to me. It was back in 2004. In 2004, I was 29 years old. I was living alone with my children. I was a single parent. I was married very early. I was married while, while I was a student at the age of 21. I had my son at the age of 22, and I had my daughter at the age of 25, and at the age of 26, uh, we have, we, we got a divorce with their father, and the children were growing up with me. Now my children are adults. My daughter is 20 years old, and my son is 23 years old, and they are um, living by themselves. My daughter, my daughter is a student. My son is uh, working. He finished his studies, and he finished also his master's degree. And uh, at that time, uh, I was 29 years old, my son was 7 years old, my daughter was 4 years old, we lived alone. Um, I come from a small town in Cyprus from Paphos, which is a rural area. Rural area. On 2003, uh, I decided to move with my children to the capital of Cyprus, which is Nicosia, which is a city. Not such a big city, because if you are watching this video and you are in, uh, in a big country, uh, a city with 250,000 uh, uh, inhabitants would be, not be called a city, but in Cyprus it's a city. So I was living in the capital, in a building, in a flat with my kids. My family was not there. My family was in Paphos. My family meaning my father, my mother, my brother, and other relatives. I was uh, single, and uh, I was working two jobs uh, at the time. In the morning, I was working in the government, and in the afternoon, I had my private practice. And um, I, I was me, it was just me and the kids, me and the kids. Um, nobody else in that city was uh, relative or close enough to help me if I have a difficulty. Uh, one night, um, around 11 p.m., my children had finally gone to sleep because my children are really, really were were really really difficult children to to manage. They wouldn't sleep, and until now that they are young adults, they don't sleep much or they don't sleep early. They might sleep late and uh, wake up late, but they they never go to bed early. So it was a, a big difficulty for me to make them to help them go to bed and sleep so that I have some time for myself. It it has it had been a long day. It was winter. And around 11 p.m. I was sitting in uh, the living room and I felt that I had fever. I was shivering. I felt very cold. My teeth were rattling. I was alone uh, in a big building in the middle of Nicosia with nobody around. As I said, my close friends, my family, my parents were all uh, in Paphos, which is two hours uh, trip from, uh, 
from Nicosia, which in Cyprus is a long distance, but <laughs> in big uh, cities you can travel within a city for that distance to meet somebody. Anyway, I didn't have anybody there. I was sitting on the sofa. I tried to watch some television to relax before I go to bed. And I was up from 6 in the morning. It was 11 p.m. And I felt that I was getting a cold. So I thought I should get up from the couch. I should turn the heating on. I should take a blanket to put on my feet. So I woke up. I, I turned the heating on and I went, I went to go, uh, I started going to my bedroom to grab it, um, grab something so as to not to feel cold. I was going my way through the kitchen. When I went through the kitchen, I saw that they have some fresh um, lemons on the kitchen table. I thought maybe I should make some lemon juice and drink it, which is full of vit vitamin C, so that I prevent the cold and I'm not uh, sick tomorrow, and I'm able to go to work, and I'm able to take care of the children. So even though I was shivering from uh, fever, and my hands were trembling, I washed the lemons, and I made a big glass full of lemon juice, because I am um, extreme. I couldn't, I couldn't just drink the juice of one lemon. I should make lemon juice. I got the glass in my hands, and I was trying to, I, I, I hold the glass and I, I, I was trying to drink the lemon juice. My hand was trembling, the glass fell, it broke on the marble in the kitchen. And if you have marble and you have lemon on it, you should quickly clean it <laughs> because lemon, lemon affects the marble. You're not allowed to, to throw any lemon or any vine and gar on the marble and there i was in the middle of the night totally alone with nobody to take care of me with a fever and uh, whereas i just needed to lie down i had uh, 300 ml of <laughs> lemon juice on white marble that i had to clean and i was like oh god and what I instinctively did, I started laughing, laughing my heart out. I said, how funny is this? I was sitting on the sofa and I couldn't get my legs from the sofa. And now I have to wash the floor. <laughs> and I was laughing. I said, this is so funny. And this laughter gave me the power, the emotional power. Uh, I'm sure that... Uh, if a neuropsychologist listens to this video, uh, he, will he or she will explain how my nervous system uh, uh, reacted at that time. And yes, I had the power to watch the flower, pick up first pick up the glass pieces with gloves, put, <laughs> put it in a bag, and I, was ke I kept laughing. And I say, you didn't have the power to get up now from the sofa, and now you are cleaning a kitchen floor with so many glasses around and it took like 30 minutes for me to clean the floor and then i made another another, another half half um, half um, uh, glass of lemon juice i drank the lemon juice i took the blanket i went to the living room i watched television for an hour i went to bed and i woke up in the morning and i was okay um most possibly <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I didn't have a cold. Maybe I, maybe I got a virus that was easy to defy with just vitamin C. Maybe I wasn't even uh, sick. Maybe it was my my emotional state that I thought that I was sick or that I was going to be sick. Maybe it was just a little bit of cold and I thought I had a cold. Anyway, why I say this incident? Because I remember it every time I'm in a very difficult situation. Every time I think that what happens now? How the, the, these are my facts. I mean, this I'm stuck in this situation. I'm stuck in this problem. What am I gonna do? I will laugh. I will laugh myself out. I will laugh my heart out. Look at it as something funny. Oh, and we have this saying in Greek that says. Το σχοινίν του χορκάτι μόνο δεν φτάνει, αλλά διπλό φτάνει και παραφτάνει. This is not in Greek, this is in 
Greek Cypriot dialect, which means a village man, he has a rope that it is so long, okay? And he says, I cannot use this rope to do what I need. And then the rope becomes half, and then he can do it. Uh, it's all in our mind, what we can accomplish and what not. It's all a matter of perspective, whether we can have resilience or not. Resilience is the capability of a person to bounce back from difficulties. It's all in our brain. If I believe in my brain that everything is bad, if I have this, um, this um, idea and this way of thinking and I think negatively about stuff and I say, oh, I'm such a poor, uh, I'm, I'm in such a miserable situation, I'm stuck, I'm stuck in a dead marriage, I'm stuck in a job that I don't like, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm being bullied or I'm be, I have mobbing in my job and I'm not able to leave it because of, of money, because of this, because of that, or I'm in a love relationship that is going and we're going astray and where love is gone or um, I have some health issues, money issues and everything like this and oh I'm such, I'm so unlucky, I'm in the worst point, how can I be, how can I have uh, optimism with everything going in my life, it's all a matter of perspective, life happens, shit happens, shit happens <laughs> very often, <laughs> very often, very often things can go wrong, things cannot come the way we have planned it, but yet, we have the power to manage our response and to manage a healthy defense mechanism in order to regain our power over our life. Of course, laughter is not the only uh, healthy defense mechanism a brain has. Another healthy defen defense mechanism is rationalization. Thinking things rationally, putting our logic to work, to be realistic, to gain a realistic approach of life. There is this um, very famous prayer, which is used in the AA groups, Alcoholic Anonymous, which says, please God, give me the power to change the things I can change and accept the things I cannot change. So it's all about taking control of your life and doing the things that you can do and letting go of control for the things you can't do. It's very intelligent, it's ingenious to be able to distinguish what is up on us and what's up on other people. What's up on other people we cannot control. I cannot control how other people behave to me. I cannot control what other people decide that will affect my life. I can't. I can't control anybody, anybody else's mind. Even if I'm a mind-controlling person or a mind-controlling freak, I will not be able to do it. So if something affects my life that it's not up to me to change, I have to let go, to accept the fact that I cannot change this. For example, we talked many times about sudden um, 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 divorces. Some people, we don't, we, we don't say names, we don't... <laughs> We don't disclose personal information on this channel. Some people have thought in the past that their life was okay, that their marriage was okay, and suddenly, out of the blue, their marriage is finished. Their husband, their wife, announces to them that the marriage is finished. Their relationship is finished, even in a love relationship. What can you do? Can you do anything? Is it up to you to ch change the mind of somebody who doesn't want you anymore? Somebody who clearly states, I'm not in love with you anymore. I do not like what we have anymore. I'm, going, I'm moving on with my life. What can you do? You can be stuck in that situation and you can become a helpless person crying for attention and help and feeling miserable day in, day out. Or you can accept the fact, the fact that your life is fucked, sorry for the expression, and <laughs> deal with it in a rational way. Can I do anything to change a person's mind that doesn't want me anymore? No. So what can I do? I accept the fact and I try to make the most of it. How you make the most of it? You allow yourself to go through the process of mourning when a relationship finishes or when a marriage finishes and you don't uh, uh, allow yourself to indulge in thinking on 
how can I change it? How can I change his mind? How can I change her mind? How, no, how can I change my faith? How, no, how can I change I change reality. You cannot change reality. You can either accept reality or fight reality. I think it's much easier and wiser to not to waste our uh, energy and our emotions in things that we cannot change. We need to uh, act in self-love, love ourselves. If you love somebody, you don't want them to get uh, extra burden or extra trouble that they can avoid. You want them to have a good life, you want them to be to be um, happy with their lives. You want them to have a good feeling. So you do not um, you do not push them to to you do not uh, neither push them nor nor allow them in a loving way to go into lengths of uh, doing stuff that will go to no avail. Why allow this to ourselves? Why allow ourselves to try? and try and keep trying for things that we cannot change uh, so uh, how can i make the most of what i have emotionally i accept reality and i try to use healthy defense mechanisms like laughter like rationalization like self-love like taking control of our lives for the things we can take control of and letting control about the things we can't let control of and of course, if all this is difficult for someone to do by themselves, there is always therapy, psychotherapy, that can be very empowering, very helpful for us to uh, learn, to love ourselves, to grow spiritually and emotionally, to be able to have resilience, self-love, and having power over our lives. And my our motto in this channel, <laughs> even though it's a Greek channel, is Life happens, shit happens. Shit happens, what can we do? We clean up and we move on. I wish uh, I wish uh, a happy weekend to everybody. See you next Friday. I specify again that I'm not a psychoanalyst and talking about defense mechanisms, I did, I did it in a very vague way and not in an academic way. Thank you very much. Bye. If you liked my video, please share with your friends, press the like button and join my channel. Bye.